Hey everybody, I'm Nate from Hugging Face, and today let's build an app to play Pictionary using Gradio and PyTorch. Now, this video is based on a guide that you can find on the Gradio site, which I'll link to. Our goal is to see how well an algorithm can tell what we're drawing. To do that, we'll use a model that I already trained using the QuickDraw dataset, which was released by Google. The QuickDraw dataset contains a bunch of hand-drawn images of a variety of objects. If you're curious, you can play with a notebook I used to train this model to train your own. My guess is you could probably figure out how to make a better one, so go ahead. We're going to use Hugging Face Spaces to host our app for free. So let's go ahead and create a new space. We'll name it Pictionary and make sure to specify Gradio. Once it's created, we'll git clone it to our local machine. Now, here you'll see that I already downloaded a couple files. One is classnames.txt, which is a file that contains the associated class names that our pre-trained model knows how to predict. The other one is pytorchmodel.bin, which is that pre-trained model uh, as a saved file. Now, we'll copy both these files into the repo we just cloned. Next, let's create a requirements.txt file to define our Python dependencies. In this case, it's Torch and Gradio. After that, we'll create an app.py file to define our app. And here, we'll start by defining some imports. Then, we'll read in our labels into a string list from the classnames.txt file. After that, uh, we'll have to define the model that we want to load. To do that, I'm going to go back to the Gradio guide and copy in some lines from, uh, from that guide into our application file. So this is our model definition followed by code to load the PyTorch model bin weights and set the model in evaluation mode so it's ready to make predictions. Now, Gradio apps work by defining a prediction function, which we'll do here. The im variable coming in here is a NumPy array that's scaled from 0 to 255. So we'll quickly, quickly convert that to a tensor and scale it between 0 and 1. After that, it's standard PyTorch prediction code, where we're going to use a torch.nograd context manager to get the outputs, use softmax to get the probabilities, and then call torch.topk to get the top five predicted label indices. We'll finish off by using those indices to look up the string names of the labels and return them uh, with a mapping to their predicted probabilities. Sweet. So now that we have the prediction function, we just have to define the interface. So we'll use a Gradio interface, uh, make sure to pass it the prediction function we just defined. And then we're going to specify for the inputs that it's sketchpad, which is the thing that lets you draw. Uh, and then the outputs are going to be label. Uh, and something else important here is that we're going to specify live equals true, which means that as we draw, we're going to get live predictions back. Then we'll just call it interface.launch. Awesome. Let's try this locally. And um, it seems to be working. So that's great. Let's share it with the world on Hugging Face Spaces by pushing it up uh, to the repo that we created earlier. After waiting for a minute for the space to build, we can play with the app in our browser. Now. Again, this model is not perfect, so I encourage you to check out the training code and train one that's even better. Bonus points if you're able to make one that's better and includes all the classes from the QuickDraw dataset instead of the 100 that I limited it to. So that's how you build a Pictionary app using Gradio and PyTorch. If you find this video helpful, give it a like and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel for more content like this. You can also join our Discord server to join thousands of other folks interested in machine learning. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.